Thousands are racing to trains and buses and to border crossings in Ukraine, trying to get away from the danger and devastation wrought by President Putin's plans to take over their sovereign homeland. In the midst of that desperate effort, some say a crisis within a crisis is developing. Some evacuees being delayed, not allowed out on trains because of the color of their skin. The treatment of black and brown Ukrainians say they've experienced being detailed by the BBC, Axios, the Independents, and the Brookings Institute. Joining me now live to talk about racism entering into an already untenable situation is Dr. Nisinga Burton, Emory University professor and founder and editor-in-chief of The Burton Wire, an award-winning news service covering world events in the African diaspora. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sonsiri. Thank you for having me. Definitely. Now, it may come as a surprise to some, but there are thousands of black and brown Ukrainians. Many are like the country's gold medalist in MEMS Greco-Roman wrestling from the Tokyo Games, Zan Beleniuk, children of African fathers and Slavic white mothers. He's served in his country's army and been elected to parliament, but also talks about how none of that has shielded him from racism in a mostly white country. And that was really during peacetime. Why does racism seem to be popping up now? in war with people of color regarded as not real Ukrainians? Well, racism is just an ugly uh, disease, right? It is a mental disease. And it doesn't matter if it's times of war, times of peace, or what have you. Uh, discrimination is discrimination, and people have to be trained to not discriminate against certain populations that they have demonized or deemed unworthy of uh, their full humanity. And so what happens in times of war, um, when you think that the bigger issue is the Russian invasion, which it is, um, you would think that it would be all hands on deck. We are all Ukrainians, you know, no matter um, where we're from, what parts of the world we're from. Um, but that doesn't happen. What happens is, is that racial hierarchy that has uh, been underneath, you know, bubbling underneath um, that nation comes into full play because you know, decisions have to be made about who gets out, who stays and what have you. Uh, and so that's when the racial hierarchy um, emerges. And that's when you see racism, racism and discrimination on full display, which is happening in the Ukraine. Many of the refugees have gone to Bulgaria. The prime minister there quoted as saying that these evacuees are different than the ones they've been skeptical of in the past from the Middle East, indicating these refugees are, quote, like us, intelligent and educated. And some feel that's a, a coded narrative. Oh, it's absolutely a coded narrative. It's, it's racism, you know, one on one. And, um, you know, what really happens is that people uh, play on the biggest stereotypes that they can of certain groups. And so when you have to oppress people, you have to have a reason to do it. Um, and so even though you may um, have seen, uh, you know, singular incidences of a, a horrible crime or something being committed, um, what happens with racism is that it becomes extrapolated or applied to everyone um, who fits that, who fits the description, if you will. And so you are from the Middle East and you have been living in the Ukraine and you haven't committed any crimes and you're not a terrorist, all of the things. Um, and for some reason, when we get into war and we know what that is, um, times of war, you are more scrutinized than others. You are demonized, um, which is me, which means that people, um, apply negative, uh, characteristics and qualities to you and your behavior. Um, and all of that, does nothing to help the situation. It, in fact, it exacerbates it. And it makes it difficult for people who have been part of the community, part of the country, who have fought for the country in many cases, um, unable to have the benefit of leaving the country if they so choose. The presence of African students in Ukraine dates back to the 1920s, recruited actually to come there for school. Now it's thought as many as 16,000 were in the country studying before the war and they're troubled by what they're seeing as a quick reversal in their treatment. The BBC tweeting about one student told at a train station, if you're black, you have to walk and not allowed onto the train there. So people who've become very comfortable and chosen Ukraine and made it their home, you know, gone on to grad school after college, really feeling like suddenly they don't belong. Yeah, I mean, that's what's happening. They are not being allowed to get on the trains. Um, when they were first evacuating women and children, um, they were push, putting off, like uh, I've seen uh, incidences where people said they were, quote, thrown off of the train, the women and the children, uh, people of African descent, Middle Easterners, um, South Asians in some, uh, some instances, um, but they were thrown off the train. Even those who have made the trek, there was a student, an incident of a student who walked more than 11 miles um, to the pol uh, to po uh, the Poland to Poland's border 
and um, was stopped at the border, was not allowed to cross. Um, and so you have all of these things happening to people who were recruited to come to the Ukraine, whether it's for academics, whether it's for athletics, whether it's for some type of employment opportunity. Um, and then when, you know, they're invaded by Russia and they should want to leave rightfully, rightfully so, along with other Ukrainians, um, they are not allowed to do so based on the color of their skin. And that is absolutely ridiculous. And it's a war crime because, you know, it's discrimination and racism before war, but in times of war, when you do that kind of thing, like discriminate against people based on race, you don't allow them to exercise their full humanity, you violate their human rights, then it becomes a war crime. And so that's why it's important to address it and to uh, correct it so that the people of Ukraine can focus on what they need to focus on, which is stopping the Russian invasion. And you kind of just touched on what I was going to ask next. Even though these reports of racism are emerging and many of those experiencing and are turning to social media to report their frustration, there's a lot of criticism and backlash out there that this shouldn't be talked about now, that the only focus should be on ending what Putin has started there. What do we have to learn in this moment and why maybe is this the moment to talk about what is happening to black and brown Ukrainians? Because this is not the first time it has happened to black and brown Ukrainians. And when you don't talk about it, people repeat themselves, right? If you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. And so here we are in another instance uh, where black and brown people are being discriminated against. And so it is part of the story. You know, it's not just the Russian invasion. There's context around that. There's context around how women and children are being treated. It's context around uh, about who has to stay and who gets to go. There's context around this whole invasion. And so we need to talk about these things so that we can co course correct, because that's what they really need to do, um, course correct and make sure it doesn't happen again. That's why we have to talk about these things. All righty, Dr. Burton, thank you so much for your insight this morning. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me.